Welcome to another episode of The Profile. I'm Gary Dunn. He's Cliff Linton. Welcome, Cliff. Thank you, Gary. How are you, to be here. Good. Good. Mate, uh, guitar players, my favourites. So it's wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we do keep in little groups. It's yes. Good. Well, I remember um, as a 15-year-old or 16-year-old working at Musgroves and Mm. And uh, you know, you come walking in with your long hair, and I did have long hair then, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, pick up a guitar and you go, blah, 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 and I go, whoa, that guy can play. <laughs> Musgrove, yes. Yeah, Cliff, where were you born? I was born here. I was born in Perth. Perth, so the usual hospital down in Subi. Oh. Yeah. So many musicians yeah. have, that come out of the Subi Echo. Yeah. Um, uh, hospital, yeah. So, um, do you play anything apart from guitar, Cliff? Yes, I started on trumpet when I was 12 and did teach myself piano about oh, six years back just because it's there, got a piano. But then, as you said before, once you're a guitar player, it's nothing bottom, else matters. Nothing else matters. So, I'm still a guitar player. I don't play piano anymore. I don't play trumpet anymore. I did, I did play flute. I still like flute. Yep. Used to do Jethro stuff. So, you, you came from a showbiz family? Yep, yep, yep. Mum and Dad were in showbiz. Used yep. to two with Bobby Lamb and, and Mo. And Bob Mars a big fan of Mo. Mo. He yep. loves that, so he wants to come over to my house. And we've got old pictures, all the original. Oh, we did give a lot to the Madge. They've got a lot of pictures of my yep. dad and my uncle at the Madge. Yeah. So they were dancers, acrobats, and they finished up in comedy acts and touring everyone. And then when they had me, they came back here, and Dad did play music. My uncle played drums, so they just started a band and. You know, worked during the day and did their gigs at night. Yep. Used to work with Harry Black and all that stuff. Yep. That period. I remember Harry, yep. so his father. And yep. So your uncle is Cliff Adam, the first yep. guitarist in Australia to be recorded in the late 1920s. Yep. And the ABC big bands like wow. where. Yeah, so that's why I'm named after him because he was my uncle. He was a lovely guy too. Can you remember what guitar he was playing? Yeah, he was always a big Barney Kessel fan. Yep. So it was really good before, he, about a, probably died Four years before he died, he was, uh, and so was Dad a big bunny and He played here at the, the old Hyde Park. So All right. I told him and organised some seats for him, so they both come down and, and wow. took him up to meet him because he was a nice player, Barney. You know, yeah. Well, was there. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it was, it was good that they you know, all their lives. So he had his, my uncle had his, had a Barney Kessel guitar, but when I talked to Barney, Barney never owned one. <laughs> the, the, the companies then just used to go, Oh, uh, yes, to go name and that. Never asked anyone. Yeah. Same as Les Paul. There was a Les Paul model they brought out, and I met, met Les mm. Paul a few times in the States. And Les Paul said, I used to, I said, well, I've got one of your Les Paul. He says, SG. I said, I used to have one. Never owned one. So mm-hmm. they gave me one. Never asked my um, name about it. I gave it to the wife. <laughs> Far out. That's how it was in those days. <laughs> yeah, so they just grabbed any name they could yeah, for branding. Just, and Yeah, you couldn't do that now, but you could yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what was the turning point in your life? I mean, Obviously, you're the showbiz family, and, and so you're brought into that world. But mm. was there a turning moment that you can remember that you said, "Well, I'm definitely going to be a guitar player"? And uh, yeah, interesting. I never thought of that one before. It just sort of happened. I was, uh, I, yeah, like, probably the same thing when I was about twelve. I was playing trumpet at school, and would have been maybe, not, would have been about fourteen. And Dad, would, actually, the first time Dad gave me this guitar. In those days, the guitars were pretty good dogs. The neck was that yeah. thick. He probably said to you, look, trumpet players don't get any girls. <laughs> <laughs> and I tried to play that and it put me off because the guitars weren't as good as they are now. Yeah. And about a year or so after that, he had some other one there, nylon, and I picked it up and I went, yeah, this is not bad. Yeah. So it came from there. And then the rest is started playing a bit. And the first gig I did, I was actually, I was, what, 16? And I went to dance, because Dad was a tap dancer and all that as well, acrobat. So I went yeah. and... Went and did, they used to teach me acrobatic tricks when I was a kid, doing forward somersaults, you know, and things like that. Uh, can't do that now. <laughs> Isn't there a song uh, people talk about you where you actually do it singing and your arms grow longer? Or Oh, yeah, like, that's my prop thing, by the extending arms. Oh, right. yeah, to dream the impossible dream it was. <laughs> Mr. Gadget. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the, you have, uh, you put uh, about as long as your arm there yeah. and you pull it over the sleeve and as you start, you just push it out and it's a fake hand. All oh, right. So, Got lucky, got gloves on, and so it extends out twice the length of my arm. <laughs> so people look, what's this guy doing? So, he yeah. did got phone home. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so your first band in 1967? Yep, Surfsiders. Surfsiders. Yep. yep. And that was with Eddie and Peter Robertson? Yep. Wow, Eddie Robertson. 
Yeah. He's down Roberts. in. Yeah, right, Piers Robertson. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's down in. Um, oh, near Albany. Yeah, just on the way into Albany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wonderful person. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was fun, fun days. You know, it was yeah. just all Beach Boy stuff and all singing high harmonies and that. Yeah. But, uh, that would have been before. The, I think he was the Inkers, wasn't he? No, that know. came after. All right. Yeah. So the Surfsiders were the first ones. Yeah. Yeah. He was with some other band before that, before he left, and I was teaching at Gilkerson then dancing. Oh, Gilkerson's and, uh, dance studio. Yeah, because well, I was learning to dance. Murray Street, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was teaching there wow. as a 16-year-old kid, and his brother was there and said, oh, my brother's just left this band, which was Eddie, and because I, I got up and borrowed Dad's amp and played some Stones song or something, because yeah. they had nights where you could do strange things. And I yeah. just I got up with a mate of mine playing bongos or some shit. <laughs> Excuse that. <laughs> and, so, uh, you can swear on this shit. Yeah, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he saw that and he said, oh, my brother starting a band up. So that's where I joined them and they called it the Surfsiders. Wow. And, and just carried on from there. Yep. Yeah. So then uh, you, you were with the Times? Yeah, what right. happened then, I was playing, we did a few shows, we went down to, to Bunbury, and uh, Jeff Hansen was playing in a band down there, and uh, he saw me and he came up and he said, we're coming up to Perth working for Bob Marr, and Bob Marr, because they're all friends, and he said, I want you to join the band, the Charles Denver group, they were called. Right. Actually, they weren't bad, they were a good yeah. band. So I went, and went down to Bunbury to uh, join the band, and they were saying, don't worry, the, uh, the guy at the pub will look after you, where we're playing the Burlington. So I rehearsed, played there four gigs that week and uh, rehearsed there. And at the end of the night, the guy gives me the bill for staying there. So I actually made no money. <laughs> oh, don't worry, the guy will look after. Yeah, yeah. What was his name? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, you don't want to know. Anyway, we went up to Bob's place, Pinocchio's, and yeah, um, yeah did the gig. And that's when the Times saw me. Yeah. After they saw that, so I want you to join. So I joined mm. the Times within a matter of six weeks. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you saw the Jim Sheridan interview, but... Yep. Yeah, just Jimbo. lots of names everywhere. It's Jimbo. Yeah. yeah. He's good. Yeah, he's into horses now. Oh, um, yeah. He's been doing that for a while. Yeah, yeah. And he's, yeah, he loves it. He's yeah. just good. Good guy, too. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. yeah. So what happened after, well, you were with the Times with Tony Tyler and Jim Sheridan. Yep. And yep. What, what happened after that? Can you? Uh, what did I do after the Times left? Uh, and around about that period, um, I... I was getting a bit tired, the boys were doing things, and I started, and Gobbles was raging then, started kick off, and I formed another band there with Reggie, took Reg, so I took Reg with me, and we had uh, Bill Blissett Reg on. Reg Carson. Yep. yep. Then we had Bill Blissett on keyboards. Right. Yeah. Wow. And so I started the band there, doing a lot of Deep Purple stuff and that. Wow. Yeah, so it was, it was a good band, it was good fun yeah. at, at that period. And I did that for probably about 18 months or so, and it was going really well, but I thought, we were in the mid-20s then, I thought, oh, I've got to go. So I just said to my wife, we're going, going to London. Ah, so what, we took what, off to London. And your wife just said, yep, no problem. Yep, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no kids at that stage? No, 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 no. Young, we were young. Yeah. And so I took off to London. Because so, I could see we were in the main venue in Perth. Where else are you going to go? Yeah. I could have gone to Sydney. Didn't really like Sydney and Melbourne. It's good. But I thought, no, I'll take the big leap. So yeah. I took off to London. I just lobbed there and... Uh, it just went looking for work and, yeah. and finished up. Uh, stayed there about two years, but after after about a month, I got uh, went from went. Well, oh, there was auditions every year. Roll up and there'd be like five hundred guitar players going for the gig. So you know, you know you're in the big smoke when that happens. I know because uh, yeah. when I had Jamie Page on, uh, yeah, and Jamie was ago. there when I was there. Yeah, yeah in exactly. a different bag. He was yeah. doing more of his uh, heavier rock, but he was there when I was there. Same yeah. time. and he said the same thing. It'd yeah. be hundreds of yeah guys standing there with their guitar waiting to yeah. And bang, Walk you get in. like five, ten minutes yeah. next. Yeah. But I scored a gig as a recording contract out of all those guys, out of about 500 guitar players. Yeah. It was recording with a band called the Sam Lino Band, and we yeah. recorded uh, uh, an album. So we did the album release and that, and, and played at Ronnie Scott's upstairs opening night, oh, and all right. that sort of stuff. Wow. And uh, it was happening then too. Wasn't yeah, it, it was one of those things like one door opens, you know, and it was all going great. And then. Um, the singer came in and wrote this song for me. It was a really good singer. It, it, the guy that produced it used to do all the, not Tony Bennett, the other, the big, the big, I uh, can't think of his name, the main singer in, in London. The, got this big, strong voice. Yeah. Can't think of his name. Tom Jones? Yeah, Tom. That's what I was thinking of, yeah. So it's he had the same, the same producer and all that. Yeah. So we basically recording that, he brought in this song and he said, oh, I've written this for you. 
Wow. And when we played it, and the, mani the management said, oh, this is a great song, that's the new single, which didn't bother me. Yeah. But then the managed, they were all Cockney boys from down there, down the other end, down there. You know, yeah, no, it's got a big hit with this. You know, can't do that. And so, <laughs> so they said, uh, we're going to release this. And they went up to the management Anchor Records and they said, no, nah, no, nah, we're making a big deal. You guys come from the bowels of the East End. And it got into a political situation mm. and uh, they paid us wages for about six weeks. And then it was it. Sorry, you mm. know, can't carry this on. We we'll, could go into litigation. So I went. Oh, see you okay. later. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> so is it true, because uh, you were Fleetwood Mac, can you tell us yeah, about well, that? Yeah, that was the that? same period. We, uh, the keyboard player, when the first, they had the first keyboard player in the band, uh, I liked him, he was really good. He'd be a real honky-tonk player. And they, the other guys, the, the management didn't like him, so they fired him. And he said to him, look, I'm going off on tour with Fleetwood Mac. Because Fleetwood Mac at that period were an R&B band. That's right, yeah. yeah. And he said, come with me because I love you. And I said, oh, and I thought, well, what, if I'd have known what the contract was going to be, <laughs> him, I would have gone off with yeah, him. Yeah, of course. But then it wouldn't be Fleetwood Mac as we know it. So. But it would have been Fleetwood yeah, Mac with you. Maxine can't sing, my wife can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a sliding doors thing, isn't it? One yeah. shuts, another one opens. So Lindsay like Buckingham that. obviously was Stevie Nicks. And, yeah, because they grabbed him and his, wife, and his girlfriend came with it and the rest is history. You know? Yeah. So, but he got the gig, you know, which is... Yeah, yeah, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that lasted a couple of years. You came, obviously then came back to Perth, or yeah. After we'd uh, a couple of things like that, you think, oh, it's, no, we just go back home now. So yeah. we came back to Perth. Yeah, and so sort of started. You know, came back and there were, you know, just grabbed gigs here. That's when all the things were shifting around, and um, I forget who I was with. Uh, it was Orange, I think. The band then was Red. Got Reggie back again. Yeah, you know, Blizzard. Yeah, got that going. That was a bit of fun. Yeah, that one. And then uh, Manteca came along and all that, the next batch. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and that did well, the Monday night. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Well, that we, was we, were, we were all there. And that's when I got into all the yeah. session work. I was working everywhere. It was, it was really flat out at the time then. It yeah. was busy, busy, busy time. Back and all of the different artists, you mm -hmm. know, from Johnny O'Keefe to, you know, just this goes on and on with the, all those different artists there to Farnham. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, yeah. It was Jerry Lee Lewis, you backed, Sammy Davis, yeah, uh, yeah. Russell Morris, well, Farnham, you just mentioned, yeah, Silla Black. Yeah. So have you got any gossip for us, Cliff? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. Could, could, could any stories planted. you can tell us on camera? <laughs> no, most of them were actually really good. Farnham's a top guy, yeah. a great guy. No, and Silla was a bit of a, she was a bit, pre not prima donna's the right word, but she was, you know, she was fussy. Yeah. yeah. The good ones are, but they're fine. Yeah. You know, and, in that sense, so no, not really anything bad with most of them. They're all pretty good. Yeah, yeah. A bit like our producer is a bit fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the cameraman. <laughs> what, uh, like you've played many guitars, obviously. Yep. What's your favourite? Ah, uh, three, three, five. No, probably no. the Strat. Strat. I was a Gibbo <sighs> player for years. There you go, mate. <laughs> it's more versatile. Yeah. And it's reliable. Yeah. The gibbos, they're more like ladies. Yes. And you have to treat them gently. Yes. The strats, you can go out with the boys and party on. Yeah. And yeah, so I'm, uh, most people know me as playing in Van Tico with the 335. Yeah. No, I've been playing strats for 15 years yeah. on, I suppose. And yeah, I've got about four. So is that a later thing for you, the strat? No, I mean, I've been doing that for the last 15 years. Yeah. 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 So when it was uh, probably longer. Yeah. Because in Manteca, I played the 335. Mm. Um, but shortly after that, I got, because I was doing the much session work, you have to have so many guitars. Mm. <clears throat> and I got all kinds of different guitars. So I grabbed a Strat because you need a Strat. And it took me yeah. a few months just to get used to it. And after I did that, I went, couldn't go back. So you're play, still playing a Strat now? Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, I, I used to see you play the three three five. Yeah, everyone thinks so, I haven't played. So yeah, I haven't seen you play live for <laughs> quite some time. I suppose I should. Alan Pith has asked me to come down and and um, and see Pretzel Logic. Yeah, so, it's a bit of fun. Yeah, yeah so. but I play the Strat in that. Yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. No, the Strat's more versatile, versatile. Than it is, more reliable. Yes, I, I get better tones out of it as well. Yeah, and, and they're not as heavy feeling. Like, I think, yeah, no, even when I could put the other 335 on, it feels so many small and it's bulky. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's the three, the strat's much more fun. Yeah. Mainly because of the tones, like I said. It's, it's a, and you, 
the, the strats really, the, the amount of guys that do play strats have all got distinct tone anyway. Mm. It comes from the player itself. Yeah, so, I agree. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, no matter what amp I play through, it sounds like yeah, it'll be me. You. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, you can't change that. You no. shouldn't. Cause we, if we, if someone there come up with a machine, says, no, yeah. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a new face. <laughs> no. So, uh, Manteca um, obviously led to a lot of session work, as you, yeah. as you, as you said. Um, yeah, in those days, there were oh, a bucket load of jingles yeah. everywhere. It was flat out, played on everything from, you know, Coke ads, the list goes on and on. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, you'd come on. I used to be on the Willisy show. Yeah. We'd, they'd be do, do the opening. Because I remember when my kids were younger, I'd, I'd rush, I'd be doing this about three gigs a night. I'd be, and it'd be Saturday, I'd be Manteca, Saturday Arvo. I'd rush home, get chains, go out and do another two, three gigs of back and arse that night. I'd rush in and the Willisie show would come on. I'd be going out the door and I'd run out the door and the kids would see me leave. Mm. But then the click would come by and it'd pan past Rick and me and they'd go, Dad, he's on the TV. <laughs> but he's just left. Yeah, he's just left. <laughs> <laughs> kids yeah. didn't know. No, no. They just couldn't figure Magic. Out. He just left. He's, what's he doing in there? Magic. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, can you tell us about the, you set fire to the stage at the raffles one time. Can yeah, you, that's one of the good days. Tell yeah. us about that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've already heard of the theatrics in the family. So, yes. it's an interesting story actually, yes. So, we were playing there in the band called the Pharaohs and doing a lot of outrageous, big jumping up in the air sort of period and that, that, that thing. And Was I that thought, in the 80s? Yeah, yeah, 80s yeah. period, you know, it's all, you know, it's all mad, leaping in the air <laughs> and big bang, everyone jumps three feet in the air. And I said, oh, look, I've, I've, we've got to do when we do that, have a big explosion go off. So I, I had some gunpowder that Dad had. So I just, you know, <laughs> and I had this gunpowder on. I got a couple of paint tins. Yeah. And if you, it's, it's quite bizarre when you think of it. And I got a block of wood and I put a couple of nails in it and I put a piece of copper across it. And I ran twin, twin flex to that and put it on each side of the Suicide stadium. bomb. <laughs> yeah. This was the 80s. <laughs> you were in the early, the early, um, you know. <laughs> so put it there and you pour the, you know, pour the gunpowder over the, where the piece of wire is and that. And then, and we, I had it on a switch. So when we were guys were all jumping in there, I ran back and switched it and flicked the switch on and it went bang. The things flew right up into the ceiling and the stage caught fire where the things <laughs> blew off. <laughs> so people smoke everywhere because gunpowder when it goes off is rather, rather severe. So there's smoke everywhere, cleared the raffles, and a couple of burn marks on the stage. That <laughs> <laughs> well, was fun at the time, the idea was good. Did you get the play there the next week? Or? Yeah, they did. <laughs> it didn't matter if you put a burn mark in the raffles then. <laughs> it was what it was, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 it was a, it was a, Raging place, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. If you, yeah. I think that was a word of the 80s, raging. Yeah, yeah. that's where we first worked with Farnham there, actually, yeah. that old raffle, yeah. And um, Bert Newton, you were on the Bert Newton show too, weren't you? Yeah, or? we did a tour across uh, Oz. Uh, and it was, I forget his name. He was a guy from Canada. He used to do pick up different tours and that. We did a tour and did the Bert Newton show. The trouble is you had to be there at like six in the morning. He didn't go on until five till 11. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's how it is, you know, in that area. We're just hanging around. Yeah, hanging around for hours in the yeah. green room. Yeah. yeah. I walk, finish up walking around in the suburbs of Melbourne, come back. <laughs> We're on yet. <laughs> come out and smile. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you're also the last band to play at the Hyde Park. That's correct. In the year 2000. Yeah. What band was that? Uh, that was Pressel Logic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because uh, Paul will always, Paul, Paul comes to our gigs whenever he can because he's a big, uh, big fan. So he uh, said, I want you guys to be the last band to play here. Yeah. And I said, okay. He said, we're fine. So it was, yeah, it was good. Was that 2000, was it? Wow. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? It's so long ago, but yeah. It's hard to imagine myself yeah. as well. Yeah. So, um, Pretty Logic's obviously going today. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. No, it's good. It's good who, fun. Who's in the band now? Has uh, it changed or? No, it's Bob Brisbane on, uh, on drums, and Bob Hawker on bass, and David Martinez on keyboards. Uh, and we've got two backup singers there, uh, and, uh, and myself, yeah. and trumpet and sax out the front. So Bob sings as well? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and he's, he, he, so he's playing drums and Originally singing. he was out the front, but yeah. one, one of the drummers we had got a double. He booked himself for some big shows, and so he, 
he had to do those and we rang half a dozen drummers, all the Ricks and everyone. And all they, the Ricks. Yes, and they, were all, <laughs> they were all gone. Sorry, you mate, we can't do it. Did you, you should have called Simo. You yeah, didn't think of that at the time. No, yeah. mate. He wouldn't have wanted the pressure. No, no, no pressure for Simo. Yeah. He'd yeah. been up there just... Yeah. <laughs> he rolls them off, mate. You know, doesn't matter. Like, he, he was doing a gig the other week. He was telling me like, he hasn't played songs for 20 years. He's just rolling out. You know, like, no problem. So, I'll remember that next time. No, you must. You <laughs> must. So I'll give Alan Simpson a plug right now. So yes. any band out there needs a drummer, they can just roll he's into anything. Yeah. He's looking for work. Yes, he, he's he plays congas when he's not work, when he's not playing the kids as well. <laughs> He plays congas with his feet while he's playing. Oh, I mean, you talk about the, you know, octopus. You know, <laughs> but anyway, so, um, so moving sideways a bit, any other jobs in your life apart from music, Cliff? No. No? Oh, yes, one. Tell us about that. Mm, not many people know this one, but it's that sort of show. Yep. Absolutely. So when we, when we were, I was working in London, some friends of ours had a part-time job there, and it's... Um, it was a, you could call it, a, it wasn't a, uh, it was like a shops where you, you buy all of the female uh, paratel and, and uh, wind up, screw up things with batteries in that the ladies like and things like that. So it was one of those shops. Oh, okay. And so you'd like a sex shop. Yes, thing. it was a sex shop thing, yes. <laughs> but it was right on the corner. You talk about vibrators, <laughs> yes, are you? Yes, that's right. Okay. But it was right, yes, and many <laughs> other things. But it, was, it was right next to the ABC Theatre on, on Edgware Road, in right near the, in, right in London. Well, so you could sell a vibrator at lunchtime yeah, and go next door and do a session. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's exactly. Because yeah, Pi Studios were down next door. Because <laughs> yes. I used to record down there as well. But, Anyway, we got run out of batteries. So what happened is that when we decided to go back home, and we used to help them out, and they're sometimes our friends, yeah. and they said, "Look, one of our people, one of our staff, were away, and we had a couple of weeks before we were going off to, to Europe before we left." And they said, "Would you like to manage the place?" And I said, "Yeah, okay." So I'll manage it. So I became the manager for two weeks, selling all of this stuff. And all these guys used to come in, and they used to have a little, little thing made. It's all. Make stuff, you know, it's like they'd come in and go, Excuse me, mate, do you have the pie and tong? And I'd go, Yeah, mate, I've got that here, you know, and went, ten, 10 quid, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Never worked, it was all rubbish, but it doesn't matter. So their takings were really good. So after the after a week, they said, We want you to run all of our branches. <laughs> <laughs> so you obviously had a knack. Right? <laughs> oh, it's Australians, you know what Australians are. So what would your pitch be for a cell of vibrators? And what, give me the pitch. Oh, well, it's this. I'd have to, <laughs> we'd have to make up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, you have so, any, many stories you can make up. <laughs> so who's your favourite band of all time? Let's get away from that subject. <laughs> <laughs> of all time? Wow. Hard um, question, I know. But yeah, it always is. Uh, you've probably got a million of them. But yeah. I don't know. Well, part of it will be Steady Dan yeah. as well, because they've been, they had been going so long from that period, so that'd be one of them. Um, but be different artists, I suppose. Uh, yeah, it's like Robin Ford and those guys mm. from periods, uh, different players like that. Yeah. Um, and go back to the original guys I started listening to would be Django and yeah. Les Paul, first guys I ever yeah. heard. So that's what got me going back to where, when I heard mm. those. I've still got my uncle uh, gave me the original Django Reinhardt. Wow, I've still got them at home. Yeah, that's what really kickstarted me. So Uncle Cliff oh. gave me those and. I listen to a lot of Django playing that stuff and still love it. And still it like, yeah. You played Robin Ford li live a lot? or yeah, 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 yeah. When I do my own shows, I'll do three or four Robin Ford songs. Sensational player. Yeah, great yeah. player. Yeah, so, so, yeah, that'd be the main things. Yeah. Bands overall, not so much. Mm. So, yeah. so um, if you were going to be stranded on a desert island, a deserted island, what album would you take with you? It'd be probably Django and Les yeah. Paul. Cool. Yeah, because I could still listen to that and yeah. still find things in when they're playing. Well, even today after listening. To yeah, the because there's a certain tenacity in the gypsy music as well. Yeah. That's, um, and I, I've, I've been to the uh, festival over in France for the gypsy festival there, just out of, out of Paris. And, and that's great because it's full of, all those artists and, and then they're amazing so that it's it's like us as rock guitar players but they're in the gypsy side mm. and they have that you know, they they breathe and, and live it 
and it's mm. great to be there and see that in Flonny and, and even keep playing. So I love that intensity and uh, passion for it, which is, you know, rock guys and as guitar players, we do ourselves, mm. we have the same, same point, yeah. the same passion. Well, you've, you've been teaching guitar for years and years and years and years and years. Yep. And obviously you do it out the back of Rock Inn. Yep, there. yep. Um, yeah, we were originally in uh, Wellington Street for oh, ages. Yep. And yeah, then we've been over there oh, about 18 years now over there. Yep. Yeah. So you obviously get enjoyment out of... Yeah, yeah. No, it's good. I still enjoy it, yeah. I've got still doing it. Guys that I... I mean, we, we still teach a lot of kids get kids in that, but I... Uh, I teach a lot of lawyers and doctors and well-known ones. I taught some government people who are well-known now. That it's amazing how guys it's money <laughs> how guys uh, still play guitar. You know, wow. it's, it's 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 good. No, it's it's slipping slowly on the global scene. Yeah, but, but it's still still up there. It's the main one. Yeah. yeah. Well, there doesn't seem to be as many heroes, if you like. No, our uh, heroes are gone. Yeah, there's yeah. no new ones. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so obviously, young kids aren't. Yeah, the promotion stuff is gone. Yeah, that's mm. the only sad, sad side of it, you know. I think guitar sales in the world are down yeah. 40% yep. or, or something ridiculous. Like yeah, because it came it's up really quick when you think, you know, when I was playing, no one played guitar much. When I first mm. started with the Surfsiders, I never thought within a, sort of a decade it'd be like... Yeah, it went nuts. Everything just went berserk. You know, so after the 60s passed and hit the 70s with all Led Zepp and yep. Deep Purple, bang, everyone wanted to play guitar. Mm. Yeah, so. I think the Beatles was it for me, and then it uh, got reinvigorated as a yeah. thirteen-year-old or twelve-year-old. Well, the Beatles, did, yeah, but the, the standard of guitars we had then in the Beatles period was pretty, you know, yeah, pretty, pretty average. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the old L series Strat, <laughs> which I managed, I think one time managed to put a whammy bar on. <laughs> Took it from thirty thousand down to three thousand in a second. <laughs> Didn't care, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, what was the favourite Perth band you saw live? Do you know what? Mm. Perth, favourite Perth band? Uh, I don't know. There's nothing that really... I the average ones at that time, when I was younger, I'd see the troops because they were older yep. than me. It's good to see the troops. Yep. They all did their shows, yep. the floor shows. So probably the first guys I saw. But, uh, yeah, they were a great band. They they did put on a good yeah. show. Yeah, you know, they were all tra- They were a Perth band, first ones to travel off over east and yeah. take them. Yeah, so I'd probably say I was out of Perth band with a bit. Yeah. yeah. Favorite TV show growing up? F three. Yeah. Always got it between gigs. It's a winner. <laughs> <laughs> I was got it between gigs. Come home and catch that. It's on at six <laughs> o'clock or something. I've just finished the five o'clock. Get home. Ready. Dinner's ready. Got to go and watch F three. <laughs> <laughs> well, and uh, what does the future hold for you, Cliff? Longevity, I hope. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I do what I do. Well, you're only looking 50, so you still got plenty. Of, <laughs> still got plenty of time to go, mate. <laughs> yeah, I. Yeah, music's still a big part of my life. I couldn't play without uh, being on guitar. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you you get a few things with the hands and stuff, but no. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you get sore fingers and? No, like, not that. Like, just any... you know, like as your hands get hold of, like you know, it's a hereditary thing. A couple of friends might have had it. You get Dubitrons where it pulls all the muscles and that. But yeah, yeah. yeah so you got to go to my hand specialist, who's a mad guitar player as well. Well, so it's, yeah, it's amazing where they crop up everywhere. So a hand specialist, what what does that involve? What? Ah, uh, well, at one stage this one was was pulling my fingers, so he had a look at it and snipped it. And so oh, my right. hands. Yeah. You know, but I do stretching exercises, and I haven't had any problem. Yeah. They just keep. You know, you got to keep them limbered up. Yeah. Uh, so no, so far so good. Yeah. But cool. it, yeah, hope and, it doesn't. And um, do you have any unfulfilled ambitions? Hmm. Get some gunpowder again. No, no, no. <laughs> I can use that. We can up with that. <laughs> There's a lot of places I can use that. <laughs> no, uh, not really. To write the ultimate song, possibly. Yep. There's always one better. So I yep. still like writing, um, but nothing unfulfilled. No. Except it would be good to travel the world under your own name, but yeah, those things are very, you know. Yeah, they're shallow things, but yeah. would have been good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. we all dreamt of that. Yeah, and I got close in a couple of spots, so I'm not worried. Mm. It's, it's, uh, Happiness yeah. is probably the key, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But music keeps me going. Yeah, music's really good. But yeah. the, uh, even just picking up the, the guitar, the strap, yeah, it still resonates all the time. And as we, 
we both know they get better as they get older. Yeah, absolutely. So does the person. So does the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. So does the wine. Yes, well, I like a good wine. <laughs> <laughs> so, your kids? Uh, two, yeah, two. Two, two boys. Yep. yep. Grandkids? Yep. No, not yet. Not One yet. on the way. Okay. Yeah, not yet. Stew in about five months. Yep. Yeah, my Excellent. eldest son's an animator. So, he's, and my other one's an electronic engineer. Yep. So, he's just, my eldest has just come back, arrived today with his wife. So, um, so he's busy doing uh, lots of uh, animated things in the States. So he's been, uh, he, well, while I was on tour backing an artist years ago, uh, my wife texted me and said, uh, rang me and said, oh, it was a competition for, you know, best animators for, they had to do a thing for Nike and he won the Nike thing in the whole wow. world. Wow. Yeah. So out of all, everybody. So it sort of gave him a good kickstart to, yep. got him into a few areas and that as well. So really good at it. does mainly movies and stuff like that or? Uh, he did do, he studied here at, in, in Fremantle at the, the art centre there in the, uh, but, uh, and did do a cut, did do his own movie, stop animation movie. Yeah. Yeah. And that got played in New York and, uh, and parts of the States. Mm. It was a small, took him two years because it's stop animation. You have to move one, wow. move all the frames, it's like 20 frames to move like that. You have to be very patient. Yeah, exactly. So you've obviously got a lot of old cassettes at home. You know, and <laughs> nah, turfed them all. <laughs> turfed them all? You, you know, you could have brought them the pro copy. Oh, I suppose so I could Dr. Welby, and Dr. Welby would have turned them into digital but format. But they were sounding like... <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> he, he takes all the... Takes the fineness. All the stuff out. And, and they sound like... Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I've heard so many stories where... Well, I've you still know, got a few. Maybe where there's I'll, an ocean in the background. And no one can talk. You know, no one can hear the talker and they bring it in and Mark gets rid of all the ocean and you can just hear Can you talking. take the seagull noises out? Absolutely. <coughs> absolutely. That's good. Oh, that's yeah. So, remember that. here at Pro Copy, um, don't forget to spread the word about the profile and subscribe to the program because um, it's supporting Perth musicians and... Everyone's got a story, like yeah. yourself, and, and we're all sort of connected in some sort of way, aren't we? we are. so, yeah. Um, okay, do you collect anything? No. Money. Nothing. Money? <laughs> no, I don't. No. Can, have you got some Possibly you no. can no. help us with? <laughs> Only small drops of wine, they don't last very long. <laughs> I do collect some wine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But then they get... That, that I, I've discovered, I haven't got a proper cellar, so you can only keep them for X amount of months. Yeah. So I do keep them, so they'll... You can, between our, you have to have a proper cellar, otherwise without extreme heat. Because I yeah. had a really good one oh, about six years back and opened it and was just poured it down the sink. Yeah. <laughs> so now you've got to have a cellar. Yeah. Or, or, a, or put it in it. I've got a business partner who lives in Melville. He's got the best cellar I've ever seen and it's just full of mm. absolutely gorgeous wines. Maybe we should invite you around there. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Yes. yes. Or we can just play guitar. And just, yeah, I'm happy to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with a <the> glass. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Cliff, what would you put in your gravestone? Uh, still here. Still here? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a pseudonym. I don't know. <laughs> Is there anybody that you would recommend coming on the show? Hmm. Yeah, a few more girls. A few more yeah. girls? Sue Black. Sue Black, yeah. yeah. Sue would be Had good. That one. Yeah. yeah, Sue and I are good friends. Yeah. We work together a bit. Sue's good. Likewise, I think I invited her to the last Gobbles reunion we did, but just, uh, for some reason she, she didn't turn up. But I uh, had her name on the door there, but mm. she played with us at, in the night after for a while. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember going watching you guys. It was good. Wonderful keyboard player and yeah. wonderful girl. Yeah. She's good. Yeah, because there are a few girls out there now doing stuff like that, which is good. Yep. Yeah. Anyone else? No. Oh. I mean, it's up to my producer who comes on and, you know, mm. So he gets the boys on. You know, I'm an advocate of you. I think we should have more girls. Yeah, maybe like I said, Donna, Donna, Donna Green. Donna Green, yeah. Yeah, Donna's great. Absolutely. Great lady. Yeah. Yeah. Because I used to teach her husband in that years back. And, uh, Graham? Yeah. yeah, and Graham's a nice guy, but Donna's a lovely lady. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and good singer. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I think I saw on Facebook last week, uh, Jamie, Jamie's, um, uh, I can't remember what song it was, a uh, original song they did. And, uh, mm -hmm blown away by Donna's vocals. Yeah, no, yeah. she's... Yeah. And the band was great too. Yeah. Nick she's tenacious, isn't it? She's, I admire her. She's yeah, really good. likewise. Yeah. 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 Okay, is there something we don't know about you that you would like to share about us? Mm. I don't know me. I know that's a hard question. Yeah. I can tell where to, though. We don't want to know what happens in the closet. 
<laughs> or, or anything? <laughs> no, I'm pretty straight. Yeah. Everyone who knows me, yeah, there's nothing. Uh, no, there's nothing I've got hidden away in the cupboards or anything. Yeah. Apart from the wine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have a quick sip now and then. Yes. No, I will do jokes on people though. So jokes. Be, yeah, not actual jokes, but tricks on people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we've been known for that. You're a bit of a prankster. Yeah. Can you give us a? Oh. It's one of those apart from the the bomb exploding at yeah. Raffles. <laughs> well, that was planned. <laughs> that was a planned one. No, uh, there are. Yeah. There are, oh, off the cuff, I can't think of anything really that, uh, but there are things that I've done over the years, yeah, to stir guys up that, yep. uh, yeah, that I suppose most people wouldn't do. Uh, no, I probably shouldn't dob myself in there. No, no, I see, no. <laughs> you get in trouble. I might too, yeah. <laughs> There's, too There's too many things I've done like that. Uh, but, I, yeah, other times I'll be bringing outfits to the shows and, Dressing up and walking in with a limp or something like that, you know, yep. dragging your foot. What do you think the best session you ever did? The jingle or the, the cameo on a guitar performance on a, on someone's? Uh, probably Coke jingle that I did. Um, it was fun. What else? There's a, the Willisy thing was fun because that ran, ran for a long time. Yeah. So that was good. So that was the intro music. And yeah, yeah. All that to yeah, yeah. So that, that, but some of them are fun. Most of them are just a, a job. And I was talking to the guys before us when uh, Peko, we were doing sessions. We got Peko in one of the sessions. Yeah. And he, he did a great job because he was a great guy and, and a great, great muse. I, yeah. I held him in high regard. You know, I yeah. like, uh, especially as a guy, but he yeah. did a great job. We did an interview with, with Peko. He yeah. said, oh, no, no. And, we, yeah. and he did the one. He, he said he just didn't like the pressure, that's all. Oh, oh, Which session being in a session, yeah. yeah. And you know, take Peko, that was Peko, yeah, yeah, yeah. But cut it fine, yeah, really did, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And lost a good man, I'm afraid, yeah, certainly did, yeah. So, we, we're going to have a once a year benefit concert, yeah, it's great. So, so I'd be, yeah. And, um, I missed the last one with one guy because I was coming back from overseas, so I missed it by a day, otherwise, I'd been there. Well. You should be playing at the next one, I think, yeah, yeah. There was some, Yep. Amazing guitar players up there. Be fine, mate. Yeah, put me in for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah certainly. Definitely for Peko. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't meet a nicer guy. No, it was great. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, Cliff, thanks for coming in and sharing your Sorry, stories with a, us. Did you did, did dig up enough things? But there's, there's, no, no, no. Come to me <laughs> later. No, that, that's all good, mate. It's just wonderful to have you here. You've been a part of the of everything, and and I know everyone respects you as a guitar player. And yep, there's a lot a of guys out there that are that it's good to go and see them play, and you see them, you've taught them, and they're yep. playing well, yep. which is good. Yeah, uh, so. It must be a buzz. Oh, it is. It's great. Yeah, yeah, you know, but because uh, it just means they create their own who they are. We're all yep. different. Yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's why I like all the aspects of that. It's, it's, it's one of the art forms that is great like that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Thank you, mate. Thank you very much Pleasure. for coming in. And, another um, guitar player. Thank you. A wonderful guitar player, Mr. Cliff Linton. Uh, much respected throughout this town. And um, yeah, I'll get along to your Pretzel Logic gig soon, right. I reckon. Looking forward to it. You want to play a section with us? You can. Oh, <laughs> mate, I don't think I'd cut the mustard. <laughs> I don't know about that. But, but thanks very much, Cliff. And, thanks, and, though. And thanks for watching again, viewers. Um, over and out.
Clinton, ladies and gentlemen.